proud of the boys. First win in conference against a tough matchup zone that uh, Coach Hunter has been playing for years, and it's just tough to dissect, especially with a young team. And to only have 12 turnovers and um, and get a victory in the first conference game, knew it wasn't going to be easy. I'm proud of the boys. Coach, you got Lester back playing now, so is he a little less aggravating for you coming up rubbing on your shoulder and stuff? And Not tonight. He was more aggravating tonight. That's why he's hugged me like six times since the game has ended. He just – he kind of um, – he made a play, and um, – I didn't like it, and he came over to the sideline with an att attitude. Not good for him, but still playing great. That was just our little spat we made up, though. Hey, Coach, in the first half, um, you only had five turnovers. Alex had six assists. Your assist to turnovers flipped from the last few games. What did you do or what did your team do different than they did in the last few games? It was just game planning against that zone. They're one of the best teams in the country at turning you over with their – with their length in that zone, playing passing lanes and kind of reading your eyes. And they do a really good job of that in the other games that they played. But we kind of kept them out of uh, out of those uh, situations and kind of put the ball in the right people's hands in the zone, and they made the right plays. Penny, as the, the game progressed, right here, Penny, you attacked the zone better. What was the difference? The ball movement seemed to be great. The assist totals, um, I think, represent that. But what was the difference in being able to attack the zone that Ron plays. Yeah, we, we actually looked at film at halftime because we take film and we watched it at halftime and saw some areas where we could take advantage of and uh, we made the adjustments in the second half. Penny, DJ and Lester, back here, DJ and Lester both talked about family and gelling on and off the court. How important is that with the youth and inexperience for this team to be at the same level at all times on the floor? Yeah, it's very important because chemistry is everything with the young team because usually when you get a young team, a number one recruiting class, Everybody wants to be the man. But this team is kind of gelled together and kind of working off of one another on and off the court. And we're going to need that moving forward because we are a young team. You talked, you talked about the youth also. I mean, obviously there's been a bunch of off-court issues with Wiseman and all that. How have they been able to just stay focused, not get distracted by, all, by that situation this you know, whole time? I think we've done a good job of kind of not making it a focal point with us. Of course, they've read it in social media and – and things of that nature, and, and we're in the midst of it. We're in the in the storm. We were in the storm of it, but we never really talked about it a lot. We just kind of moved on, business as usual. Uh, let's get to work and let's keep playing. And luckily for us, uh, we were winning during that those storms. Uh, Penny back here. Uh, just a, kind of a question. Uh, during the schedule, you played a couple of players that you kind of watched grow up from KJ to Chandler and also Antonio. Um, how proud are you, these there. guys? and their skill growth since you've seen them younger? Yeah, you know, um, four guys this year already, Daryl Brown, Antonio, uh, and both Lawson brothers. Uh, I know those guys very well, and I know what they're going to bring to the table. And I knew KJ is, was capable of having a game like that tonight, and I knew he was going to play a bunch of minutes. New Coach Hunter was going to play him at home, and he's been a, a huge piece for them. But to see all, all four of those guys play on this level and how, how much they've grown, I'm very proud of to have coached them and, and seen them doing well. Penny, you said on Saturday that it wasn't going to be easy. When you when you fall behind early, did you ever have an I told you so moment with the freshman as if it's going to be tough? Well, yeah. To me, in my mind, I'm like, okay, you got to expect that because the matchup zone, you can talk about it, you can prepare for it, but they got to go out there and execute. And the first group just wasn't ready, offensively or defensively. So we had to sub and bring the vets in. I'm saying vets and they're sophomores. But bring them off the bench and kind of slow things down and got back into the game. Coach, back here, you've got your final non-conference game coming up Saturday. What can you tell us about this Georgia team? Man, Georgia is scary because they played a tough schedule. They went to Hawaii, uh, played Michigan State to the end. Anthony Edwards had two points at halftime and I think 34 in the second half. He's got his very explosive. They have other pieces besides him, but he's, man, he's a lottery pick, top five pick guy that's going to be ready for this game on the road at our building. A ton of people from Georgia coming down. I mean, that team is – it's scary because they've already played against a lot of big teams already. They've had a tough schedule, so, you know, we got to be ready. Coach, I have a question. Uh, when Coach Hunter and KJ was in here, we spoke about how the fans, some of the fans, booed KJ, and Coach Hunter stated that how he was pissed. KJ didn't really speak about it. He got emotional. If, the sh if that was you and one of your players in their hometown, the same thing happened, how would you have handled that? I mean, there's nothing that you can do to stop the fans from booing. You know, I think that's unfortunate. Uh, KJ and Dietrich were both put in a situation with their father that they they needed to move, 
And I know the fans thought that you can never blame the kids. I mean, it's just not, it, it is what it is. And then it's a family decision. And KJ didn't do it. He, all he did was do well while he was here at the University of Memphis. I think he was freshman of the year, his first year. I mean, come on, you got to respect that. And he's such a good kid. Like you say, he got emotional. He could have just brushed it off. But this is his hometown. He wanted to play well. And for the few fans that booed him, you know, that's a shame on you. You shouldn't, you shouldn't do that to kids. Penny, what can you tell us on back here, Penny? Over here. Oh, I'm sorry. Those the glasses lights. work, by the way. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it's just the lights. Um, no, Damien Ball's injury. What can you tell us? Um... I think it's just a stinger, like in his shoulder. He got elbowed right on the top of his shoulder, and his arm went numb. And that's just basically just having a stinger. Uh, he was having an incredible game. Uh, 15 points, six, re six assists, and, and four rebounds is a, is a big game. When you, when you look at where the team is right now, where do you think you all have the most room for improvement? Where do you all need to get better in what aspects? I think on-ball defense, we have got to get better. And then communicating. We don't talk. We just kind of switch out of just necessity, and there's no communication. And we get, we get mixed up a lot out there. When you watch film, you'll go, wow, there wasn't a lot of communication. You can tell there's not a lot of talking. There's a lot of moving, but there's not a lot of talking. But obviously, communication and uh, guarding the ball, off the ball. Because they just went one-on-one -on -one the second half and got 15 free throws out of it, so can't have that happen. Coach, Alex Lomax had six assists in the first half. He dropped some doms in the first half. Do you do you see a lot of you and his playmaking ability when he drops doms like that? Well, I, I'd like to take credit for that, but that's all Alex. I mean, obviously, I coached him since sixth grade, and I've been trying to get into his head on how to, you know, dissect the floor and where his passes are going to come from, but that's all him. You know, he's growing up. He's seeing the game is slowing down, and he's making the right decisions. Coach, you've – made an emphasis about rebounds and turnovers all season. Were you satisfied with your team's rebounding effort and controlling the turnovers? I'm very satisfied because I think that early in the season, we were ranked really high as one of the worst defensive rebounding teams. And now, like the last three or four games, we out-rebounded the other team. So, I mean, I'm very proud of that. And then to, to cut the turnovers down to 12, I mean, you, wanna be, you know you're going to have between 8 and 12. That's going to happen with the way that we play. If we can keep it around there, we're going to be very successful in this league. Coach, what's the next step for your defense? I mean, you're leading the nation in effective field goal percentage, forcing a lot of turnovers, blocking a lot of shots. What's what's sort of the next step uh, on the defensive side? I think what we want as a staff is to really be aggressive on the catch, to push the catch out as far as we can, and then contain. Keep that ball in front of you, man. We don't want to create triggers. That's guys blowing past us and bringing another guy up. I think Precious got his third foul, and we had to take him out because our guards are getting blown around. You can't, you can't have that. When you watch all the great teams that have won, those guards can guard the bounce, and they're not going to get blown around. So that's the next step for us. Right here. You had five players in double figures. Uh, just speak about how a complete team win. Yeah, we have to do it by committee, man. And we got a ton of talent on this team. We're one of the deepest teams if not the deepest in the country as far as talent from top to bottom. And we have to share the basketball. And those 24 assists are a product of five guys being in double figures. That's the way we want to see it. It makes us harder to guard when we move the ball and guys on this team stepping up. And uh, I'm proud of that for sure. This is one of our most complete games, even though it was a tough game. It's one of our most complete games as a team because we shared the ball and we had five guys in double figures.